The Global Interpreter Lock, or the GIL, has been a fundamental issue in Python concurrency for many years, but recently there has been some efforts to remove it. In this video, I'll explain what is a GIL and what are the implications of its removal for machine learning workloads. Basically, the Global Interpreter Lock means that only one thread can be executing Python bytecode at a time. Now, what this means requires some understanding of Python's concurrency mechanisms. Concurrency in Python can be achieved using one of four mechanisms, async I.O., threading, multiprocessing, and native acceleration. Async I.O. uses an event loop to concurrently execute tasks, which are represented by coroutines. A coroutine can yield execution when it is waiting for I.O., like disk or network access. This type of concurrency is useful for parallelizing programs that make heavy use of I.O., but it can only run on one CPU at a time. So it's not too relevant for computationally heavy machine learning workloads, and I won't be talking about it too much in this video. Threading is a second concurrency mechanism in Python. A program can launch multiple different threads that execute at the same time, while also having access to all the same memory and global variables. However, the global interpreter lock means that even if there are multiple threads, only one of them can be executed in Python at a time. Multiple threads can be doing non-Python work, such as waiting for I.O. or making native function calls, but only one thread can be executing Python code at a time. The way this works is with a locking mechanism, so other threads that are waiting to execute Python code will have to wait to acquire the global interpreter lock before they can run. Practically, this means that programs that do a lot of logic inside Python are effectively single-threaded. At least, that's the case with standard Python, but with no Go Python, this limitation is removed so that multiple threads can actually execute Python code using multiple CPUs at the same time. The other common concurrency mechanism is multiprocessing, where the main process launches several subprocesses to complete the task. On the surface, this might seem similar to multi-threading, but actually, each process has its own memory and its own copy of the Python interpreter. Since each process has its own interpreter, they can all run at the same time without being subject to the global interpreter lock. And this is the only way to use multiple CPUs in standard Python. Multiprocessing comes with a disadvantage that inter-process communication is quite difficult. The most common ways to do this is using shared memory or inter-process communication using message queues. But both of these add considerable engineering overhead, as you cannot simply share a Python object between processes. Oftentimes, the only solution is to duplicate the object in memory for each process. The last concurrency mechanism is leaving Python entirely and doing the concurrency in a different language like C++, Rust, or sending it to a GPU to execute in CUDA. When a program leaves Python to execute a native function, it will release the global interpreter lock and reacquire it once it's done the function. According to one DeepMind engineer, their team faced so many issues with Python's multi-threading and global interpreter lock that they decided it was easier to just write the whole thing in C++ instead. Given all this hype around no girl Python, I wanted to test how impactful it would actually be for various machine learning tasks. To test this, I made a simple benchmark where I would spin up a bunch of threads doing the same thing. In each task, I would do some of the most common operations in a bunch of frequently used machine learning libraries, such as scikit-learn, pandas, and numpy. By running the same program on a standard version of Python versus a no-girl version of Python, we can measure how much this change matters for each machine learning library. The first task is rendering a Mandelbrot fractal. This is not really a machine learning task, it's an algorithm that can be written in pure Python with a lot of loops and branches. For this task, the no-girl Python runs about three times faster than standard Python. This is exactly the ideal case for no-girl Python to speed up because it involves purely Python computations, with no native code or I.O. The next benchmark involves doing a bunch of random operations on pandas data frames. These operations involve doing operations on columns using an apply operator, sorting, and grouping, stuff like that. For this task, the no girl version is about 2 times 7 times faster than standard Python. A lot of these operations, like apply and transform, are done in Python, but some of them, like sorting, is done in native code. But the large amount of Python operations in typical pandas code makes it ideal for uh, no girl speedup. Next, we benchmark SciPy. This is a library commonly used for numerical operations like optimization or integration. For this library, I found a small speedup of about 12% when moving to the no girl Python. Most of the work here is done in native code, but there are a decent number of callbacks to Python functions that we're trying to optimize or integrate. That's probably why we see a small speedup. 
How about the NumPy library? For this library, we generate some random matrices and do some operations like multiplication or singular value decomposition. However, I found node speedup when moving to node gil python. All of these operations are done in native functions, which already releases the gil, so there's no speedup. Okay, how about scikit-learn? For this example, I train some support vector machines on randomly generated data. Again, all of these operations are done in native code, so there is no speedup. It even runs a little bit slower than standard Python, and this is totally possible for some programs. In the final example, I generate some sentences using the GPT-2 model and the Hugging Face Transformers library. Interestingly, I couldn't even benchmark this because the tokenizer crashed when I tried to run it with no Gil Python. This goes to illustrate that not all libraries support no Gil Python currently, and you might get incorrect results or crashes. But once this is fixed, I will expect a similar result as NumPy. Most likely, there will be no speedup, because all of the operations are done in native code and not Python. Here's a summary of all the results. Basically, libraries that do a lot of computation in Python will experience significant speedups when switching to uh, no Gil Python for multi-threaded code. Libraries that call directly into native Fortran or C++ routines will be minimally impacted by no Gil Python. Out of the libraries that I looked at, only Pandas does a significant amount of computation in Python. But these libraries are large and complex, and your results will vary depending on exactly which parts of the library you benchmark. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. That's it.